Amen. Praise the Lord. So in Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12, when you talk about God wants to bless you, just putting God first, seeking first the kingdom of God, and all these, if you put God first, and seek the first the kingdom of God, and it's right that all these things will be added unto you, amen, whatever you have need of, God will take care of, spiritual, physical, amen, whatever it may be, he'll always provide what you need, right? And, and so it began with Father Abraham. Genesis chapter 1, I mean, excuse me, chapter 12, verse 1, it says this. And the Lord said to Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives, your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. God told Abraham when he called him, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Okay, now let's rewind now. Listen carefully where it all began. God calls Abraham. He calls him to leave his, his own country, his native country, his relatives, his father's family, to go to a land that he would show him. And here's the promise to Abraham. He says, I'm going to make you a great nation. That is where Israel came from. That's when the nation of Israel was birthed. You see? And let me just throw this in for free. When we hear about all this narrative about the Palestinians and all, and Israel and the conflict, and Israel is occupying their land. No, my friend, right there. It was way before Israel. It was promised to God's people. It was promised to Israel way before, amen, the Palestinians even got there. Let me just throw that for free. Because you'll hear a lot of narrative on on. on on social media that tries to change the narrative, the truth. So God called Abraham and says, I'm going to make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Abraham, I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. Verse 3, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. That's where it all began. Amen. If you ever want to live your blessed life ever, you got to go to your roots. You got to go where it all began. How did it all start? It started with Father Abraham. God calling Father Abraham to leave his family, leave his relatives, leave his country. And he promised him a, a country. He promised him a land. He promised him a blessing, right? He promised him a great nation. He promised him a great name. That's where all the blessing came from. From Father Abraham. How does that relate to us? In Galatians chapter 3, verse 7 and 9. The scripture reads, Therefore know that only those who are of the faith are sons of Abraham. Therefore know that only those who are of the faith. How many are here are of the faith? What do you mean of the faith? I'm talking about those of us that have chosen to put our faith in the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that God the Father did in fact send his son into this earth, right? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe faith in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Those of us that are of the faith that have chosen to believe in the good news, the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and are saved, we are of the faith. And therefore, those of us of the faith there are, then are the sons and daughters of Abraham. Therefore, know that only those who are of the faith are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. Who are the Gentiles? You and I. <laughs> Those that are not of the Jewish people, Jewish nation, right? Amen. We are the Gentiles. So what he's saying there, he's saying the scripture 
foreseeing that God would justify us, the Gentiles, by faith, by our faith in Christ, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you all the nations shall be blessed, so that those are of the faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Ooh, did you catch that? So those of us are blessed with Father Abraham because God called Abraham to leave his country, leave his family relatives because he promised him another country, another land, right? A promised land. He promised him a great name. He promised him to build a great nation. He promised to bless him so he can be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. And that same blessing then is a blessing that has been passed on to those of us that are of the faith. So we have a point of reference. We have a root in this promise. This is why Jesus was try, trying to communicate to his generation, don't worry about all those things. Don't be so stressed out, full of anxiety, that's making you sick, that worry and anxiety has you by the throat, that you can't even be active doing what God wants you to do because you're worried about all the things of this world. It has distracted you. He says, don't worry about those things. You seek first my kingdom and my righteousness and all the things you have need of, I'll take care of them. You just put me first. So then those who are of the faith are blessed with believing Abraham. So you look at the story of Abraham. God called him, right? And Abraham was obedient. That's the key. Let me tell you something. The key to this blessing is faith but also was always tagged on to faith is obedience. You can believe, believe all you want to and still be locked in a room in darkness full of depression. You can believe all you want to and still be addicted to certain habits and vices. You can be, believe, but until you learn to have faith and walk in obedience to what the word of God is teaching us, amen, God's word, God's laws of the kingdom of heaven, right? We won't see the blessing. Abraham, by faith, left, was obedient to God, and, and went and didn't even know where he was going. Didn't even know where God was leading him, but by faith he believed. It was Abraham's faith that credited him with righteousness. And so, when you look at Abraham's obedience, he leaves, right, takes his family, he takes his, his nephew Lot, which I don't know if he should have did that because God said leave everybody, but he took him. And later on you see the conflict and the problems he had with Lot, right? But he leaves. Abraham finds himself in Egypt. Now remember, Egypt is, is a type or symbolic to the world today that we look at the world that God delivered us out of. The systems of this world, they, whatever world you came out of, where God delivered you out, he delivered out of this kingdom of darkness, brought us into the kingdom of light. Right? And so he goes, and he goes into Egypt, right? And it is in Egypt that you see the, the working of God's promise. All of a sudden, in Egypt, that's where Abraham begins to accumulate wealth. Just like the scripture says, the wealth of the wicked is later for the righteous. Because God, see, in other words, we might be in this world, but we're not of it. But while we're in it, God is going to use this world to supply all of our needs or whatever we need to do God's work and fulfill his mission and assignment in the kingdom. And if you just keep God first and, 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 and live right according to the kingdom, Things will be attracted to you. You won't have to pursue them. They'll pursue you. And that's what happened to Abraham. He goes into Egypt, and he starts to, that's where he starts accumulating wealth. Then it's time to leave Egypt. But when he leaves, when he comes out of Egypt, he comes out with substance. 
He comes out with, with gold and silver and cattle and servants. He comes out pretty much rich. But was all that, those riches and wealth for, for Abraham and just his family? That wasn't God's promise. God's promise was to bless him because God was going to use him to be a blessing to the nations. Always keep in perspective why God wants to bless us. It's not just so that we can be blessed, me, myself, and no more. It's so that we could always be a blessing for the kingdom, a blessing to others. And he says a blessing to the nations, right? So God comes out of Egypt. He accumulates the wealth because God is already supplying what he's going to need to fulfill his assignment. He goes on, right? And uh, not only did God promise a great name, a great nation, uh, to be blessed, but he also promised him a son, right? A son. Because this promise and this blessing had to be passed down so that we can get it, right? Right? And so he promised a son. Now, you have to remember, Abraham, as you read the scriptures, was about 90, what, 99 years old or something. He still hadn't had a son. And how am I going to have a son? You all know the story. If you don't read it, it's, it's powerful. It's amazing. But then God says, I'm going to give you a son. But he's old. And he's thinking, how can I have a son? Him and his wife laughed. They're old. How can we have a son? And so Abraham, by becoming impatient, now here's human nature. Sometimes, how many know that that's our danger when we're seeking the kingdom of God and trying to do God's will is that sometimes we get ahead of God. Sometimes we get impatient. God gives us a promise. He gives us a glimpse of what he wants us to do. Or we get a vision. And, and, and many times a promise, you know, sometimes we think it's today, it's now, or whatever. It's in a process. Abraham then begins to think, wait a minute, you know, I'm getting older, time is going, amen, I'm not getting any younger over here, God, you promised me a son. So Abraham begins to take matters into his own hands, right? And then Sarah, same thing, feeling, wait, okay, we're getting older, we're, Abraham, where's the son? Did God promise it? We're not getting any younger, we're 90 some years, 90, well, it's going into 100 years old. So Eric, what is it, you know, Sarai gets a, a bright idea and tells Abraham, why don't you take our servant, our head, our servants, and, and let's have a son. Let's help God out. Abraham, without hesitation. <laughs> Abraham was a man. You got to remember, he, he was a man of God, but he was a man. <laughs> Even, even in Egypt, you know, he was concerned. He even lied. Remember that? He even lied about his wife. He told them that she's my, she's my sister. Until they found out, why'd you do that? You're going to get, you're going to get us angry with your God. And he, he, there's human nature at play. But there was a promise that was given. I said there was a promise that was given. And once a promise is given, how many know when God promises something, he can't take it back. He won't take it back. What God promises has to happen. God is not a God like man that he should lie. What he promises, he will fulfill it. It has nothing to do with your human merit. It has nothing to do with who. As long as you stick with God and you continue to follow God, and you might make some mistakes. Human nature might get in the way. You might sometimes put matters into your own hand. But thank God for the grace of God that as long as you return to God, God will always return to you. So they have a son, but God says, no, Abraham, that's not what my plan. I told you I'm going to give you a son, and the amazing miracle took place. God gave him a son, Isaac, because the promise had to follow through. Blessing had to follow through for us to receive it. So that blessing, that's everything that God promised Abraham. You'll read through the scriptures, amen. He would remind Abraham, Abraham, at one point, I love that, that part. Get out of your tent. Look at the stars. Look at the sky. Count the stars. 
He says, this is how I'm going to bless you. Your seed is going to be like as many as these stars you can't even count. See, sometimes you got to step out of your tent to see the bigger picture. Some of us are so stuck in our tent at the moment, in the present, that we don't see the bigger picture that God has. We're, we're satisfied with where we are. We're satisfied with that little nine to five job. We're satisfied with that little place right there where we're at. We're satisfied with this, what we're doing. And when God had the bigger plan and bigger picture in mind, but you're stuck in your tent. And if there's ever a way I try to communicate Sunday after Sunday, month after month, year after year, God has bigger plans for VOSB. God has bigger plans for each and every one of us. And it's bigger than we could ever imagine or dream. Get out of your tent. Because the promise of Abraham was for us. It started with Father Abraham. He gives him a son because God promised it. And it was through his seed, amen, that the blessing was going to continue to be passed on. Now, when you look at his son, God even had to remind him when he grew up, right? He needed a wife. God provided a wife. And you know what was amazing? I was just reading this this morning. And when, when God, Abraham was getting old, about to die, he, he told one of his main servants that, that kind of managed his whole house with all of his riches, he says, I need you to go back to my country. I need you to go back to my country. I don't want my son to find a wife here in Canaan. I want you to go back to my country, and I want you to find my son a wife. And he says, but what if, she, he goes, go and ask for her to come. And, he, and the servant says, but what if she don't want to come? What if she don't want to come with me? He says, then your oath is fulfilled. You're free from your oath. He says, but God is going to go before you. And so he went, and he goes to Abraham's country, right? He's there by the well, and he he's like wants to be faith, he's like a faithful servant. He wants to be faithful to Father Abraham, his master. So he prays a prayer to his master's God. And he prays this prayer, and he says, he says God of my master, he says, I'm on this, in other words, I'm on this mission, I'm paraphrasing, I'm on this mission to get a wife, but what if she don't come? I don't want to fail my mission. So I'm asking you that the first woman that comes, if I ask her for a drink, and if she gives me a drink, and, and then she asks to, 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 to uh, give my camels some water, then that is the one. And as, as he was done, barely speaking this prayer, all of a sudden, here comes Rebecca, Right? Rebecca coming to put with a pot to get water. And, and he asked her for a drink. And she pulled immediately, without hesitation, pulls the pot, gives him water. And then asks him, do you want me to, 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 to give water, drink to your camels? <laughs> oh, it don't end there. So he asked her, is there room at your house for us to spend the night and so forth. And so, big, long story longer, whatever, they go to the house and they get there and he, she goes and tells her, her sister, her brother, everybody in the house, right? So, so they get there and guess, guess who the family is? It is Abraham's sister. It was Abraham's household. The sovereignty of God how God works, how God, everything is ordered by God. God is in control of all of life's circumstances and situations, whether good or bad, just or unjust, positive or negative. Our job is to just trust him, to believe and trust him no matter what, and know that we also have a promise that even if it goes bad, we have a promise as a part of this promise and blessed with Father Abraham, Abraham that God will work all things together for good to them that love him and are what? Called. So he gives him a son. He comes back and he has a wife. They get married 
Abraham dies. Now the whole promise and the whole blessing is now resting upon Isaac's shoulder. Will he be obedient? Because everything hinges on faith in God and obedience. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, obedience, so that everything else will fall into place. So that Isaac can now, like his father Abraham, live his blessed life ever. Every head bowed, every eye closed.